Margaret Rogers Van Koops, and I'm here today to share with you uh, my need for your help. Yes, I spent a lot of years throughout my life helping other people, and now it's a big time for me. So let me go back and explain why. When I was born, I was born in 1942. Uh, air raid was going on, and uh, B-1 bombs were dropping all over London. And yes, one dropped right across the road from the hospital where I was actually being born and, and having my core cut. And uh, it blew out three apartment flats and a lot of people were killed and the hospital was in chaos while my mother was recovering from the birth. And uh, after it was all over, some nurses came and held me. And apparently, according to my mother, short version here, I was able to heal their energies. So I guess I came in with a healing ability. And uh, by the time I was four and a half and uh, the war had ended, my dad used to have uh, reunions with the men and uh, mum being crippled uh, couldn't often go, so dad would take me instead. And I used to sit on the laps of the soldiers and uh, heal their auras. And um, then I'd jump down and run along and play the one-armed bandit and someone give me some more coppers and have some more fun and someone else would put me up and... You know, that's how it went on until I was seven and then I got honoured by the regiment. Now, if you want to know more about me, then you can read my book, My Journey Into the Oneness. But I'm not about promoting my book here. What I'm telling you is I got a dream. And, I, you know, as a child, you hear things from your spirit guides in a childish way. And uh, so by the time I was going to school at four and a half, um, I was told that one day I was going to have my own school and be a teacher. So I took that very seriously and uh, actually did uh, believe it. Uh, there was never any doubt in my mind because as a medium I was seeing uh, dead people and hearing them talk and I was telling what they were saying to the adults who thought I was a bit off the wall but when I gave them information about their dead relatives they couldn't discount it. And so by the time I was seven, um, I really accepted that I could hear the voices of spirit entities. And of course, I also had alien friends and I also had um, archangels and Jesus and all these kind of wonderful people in my life. And when I told the adults, they all thought I was like vivid imagination. My mother was the one who said that most of all. She was always saying, Margaret, you have a vivid imagination. You stop having to fantasize and I said, what's fantasizing? Because <laughs> I didn't even know what that word was at that young age. But of course, as time went by, um, I became a little bit more confident. And uh, by the time I was in high school, I had a few friends who were like me, a little bit psychic. And uh, we used to sort, uh, sort, you know, sit and chat and sort things out and try and rationalize what it was that we could do. And we all had different abilities. One of my friends, she could write stories. And uh, one of the things I like to do is write poems as well. And uh, then the other one, she would have inspirations and tell us stuff that seemed to be off the wall for us, you know. So what goes around comes around. But all through this time as I was growing into adulthood, I was constantly reminded by the spirit guides that one day I would have my own school. And though I had no mu not much of an idea about what or how, I'd made up my mind that I wanted to be a nurse or a doctor. And going through my schooling, I was always getting C's and D's. And so I kind of got told over and over again, especially by my English teacher, that I would never amount to anything because I can't write. Well, what I didn't know in those days was that I was dyslexic. And although I knew all the letters, when I was writing them, I'd box them. And uh, I have a son that's the same, he was worse than me, and my sister is the same, and later I found out that my mother had it to a degree. So I started to realize that there was something in the family gene, but by then, dyslexia hadn't been discovered. <laughs> so I was still floundering around trying to understand just what was going on with our brains. And during all this time, of course, I'd become a, a very famous medium in England, uh, you know, 21 and being able to give messages of proof of survival of life on the other side was the, the main emphasis because after a, a world war and so many people, you know, lost loved ones and 
really believing still in hell and heaven and wondering if they are going to hell or heaven and all these kinds of things and having messages from loved ones to prove that there was a heaven and that they were happy thereafter in heaven and of course the way I was getting it in those days was relative to the way people wanted to hear it but I was always evolving I was always getting more information uh, all the time about something that they weren't yet thinking about and so I was kind of ahead of everyone and uh, feeling it, you know, ostracized for it in many ways because I'd open my mouth and start sharing something. For example, I remember because uh, certain relatives were deaf um, that I was knowing I could talk into the back of the head here and that the head would reverberate and they could hear me. And uh, so I started experimenting with deaf, deaf people uh, and doing this and they'd answer me and people would say, how did you do that? Was it magic or something? How did you make them hear you? Um, so I'm trying to explain the brain is inside there. It's like a drum and it's reverberating and that was the way I was thinking in those days. So you can see I've been a pioneer in my life and again I mentioned that if you'd like to know more about me, you can read that book, My Journey into the Oneness, which I only wrote a couple of years ago because I didn't feel I could share all these weird stories that I had that brought me to who I am today. But while all this was going on, I'm still hearing from archangels to master teachers to just everyday people who are in the spirit world, remember this, you're going to have a school. And of course, as I got older and things happened and I was well supported in England for being a medium, I started to think, well, I'm going to have a psychic school. So out of that came around 35, uh, having had a, a death experience and uh, overcome Parkinson's disease, I thought, okay, I have a property, I can turn that into a school. And out of that came Sumaris Education Centre. And uh, so I was teaching that. We were running it for a year or two, and, and it was doing very well. We had uh, very small rooms because it was England, but we had like 10 people in a room. I had a big living room that had been turned into a, a, a meeting room, and we used to have about 30 people come for messages from the other side or talks that I would give. And uh, I also had two or three staff, like, uh, you know, hypnotists and um, reflexologists, aromatherapists, Valerie Warwood, and people like that in those days who'd come and teach there. And so I was really seeing a school manifesting, and I was so happy. And uh, then America happened. <laughs> uh, and uh, my British group, uh, who, by the way, had been putting on the Mind, Body, and Spirit festivals for quite some time, uh, decided to launch themselves into America. And by the way, you know, when I went to school after the war, there was a little ruffian that used to kick my ankles all the time, who well, nobody liked. He was a small little boy, and we were all about five. And one day when I go to do the mind, body, and spirit in England, lo and behold, this little boy is now an adult and is the one who's organizing all these events. And in fact, went on to take it to Australia as well. So um, we were friends, and uh, when he said he wanted to do the one in uh, America, I was ready to do it. Now, up until then, I was very much the medium, the psychic, the teacher of psychic development, how to read tarot cards, uh, how to uh, read auras, how to know by healing and sort of Reiki that hadn't really manifested yet. Uh, so we didn't use that word, it was called the laying of hands. All these kinds of things were not even called metaphysical. Uh, it was just paranormal stuff. And I was teaching that and I was pretty popular and I had a lot of people who wanted to study. So I felt, oh, I, you know, I'm, I'm doing my school. I must be you know, in the right vein doing this. So I get over to America and I'm doing this mind, body, and spirit, and I did the same thing as I do in England, messages on the other side, and I can usually do about 50 people in an hour, very quick messages. So there I am, standing on a boxing ring and uh, doing the messages, and everyone's around me, and, and I get off when I'm done, and some woman grabs me, and, and uh, all the people follow me back to my booth. <laughs> I was very busy, I might add, doing readings during that event. 
And uh, it led to me being taken to meet the head pastor of a spiritualist church in Los Angeles. And uh, as a result of that, they asked me to do a service. And I was like, oh, I know I can do it pretty style. So I did. And, uh, you know, they were so fascinated by what I could do and how I could do it. And, of course, I'm assuming that they were doing the same thing over here. Uh, and they, they absolutely were just floundering around, asking me all sorts of questions, pushing in on one another, and I felt like I was a great ce celebrity, and I, I was kind of embarrassed by it, because I was, you know, British people are much more laid back and kind of, excuse me, but I hope you'll give me a message, you know, uh, whereas these were, can you tell me, can you tell me, and so on. So I had to step back and, and, and say, wait, 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 you know, um, you know, I don't just keep doing this all day long, you know. Uh, and the head pastor came up to me and uh, they'd been talking at the back of the room and I kind of noticed that. And uh, they came up and they said, we'd like to ordain you. And I'm like, ordain me? We don't ordain ministers in, in England. This is strange and I'm living in England. Why would I want to be ordained? And my spirit guide said to me, this is your journey. You must do this. And I'm like, no, I don't want to do this. You know. Anyway, they put the British, uh, sorry, American people push me and I found, because of Spirit Guides, I said, okay. And what followed was the most fascinating service I've ever had in my life, where I was frocked, defrocked, refrocked, defrocked, and frocked again. Uh, proper service, in every sense of the word, fantastic event. People who'd written poems, played music, all sorts of things were done, hadn't known why, brought them together and made this fantastic service for me. And there I was, He'd finished, my name is Margaret Rogers then, and uh, he said, now, um, Reverend Rogers will now do the Holy Communion service. Well, I'm like, what? <laughs> uh, although I knew it because I'd been brought up with that faith and understanding, uh, I had never actually done that service, so I knew it off by heart, having been a part of the service in churches. So um, I then was asked to do it, so I what could I do? I'm now a minister. So I turned to the altar and uh, read the service uh, from the book. And when it came to the blessing of the sacrament, I actually held my hands over it like this. And I could see these rainbow colors coming out of my hand, and it's the only time I've seen it, into the wine and the bread. And I was shaking so much, not with nerves, but with the energy that was coming through me. And my head was burning like on fire. And... Uh, you know, it was very uncomfortable, and I'd only had that one time before when I'd been uh, confirmed in the British church. So I'm thinking, what's that? What's going on? But anyway, I did the service. I gave everyone the wine and bread and so on. And uh, then after it was done, they all were lining up and coming up to me and telling me that when they drank the wine, they all felt very hot. And when they ate the bread, they tingled all over, and there wasn't a difference in any one of them. And meanwhile, my head's burning all the time, and someone had given me an Aquarian Gospel uh, for, as for being my present for being ordained, to remember always. And uh, so eventually I'm glad to leave, and I get in the car, and I drive back to Beverly Hills, and my head is so burning, I'm like this in the car, and anyone following me would think I was probably drunk. I'm saying, get, take away, don't give me this pain. And I get to my apartment, and uh, I hear open this Aquarian Bible and I do I open it and I just point my finger at something and I read and this is what I read and upon the twelve was the flames of the Holy Ghost and all around them was light bright and as I read that my head just switched off and I was normal again Phew. but I was also working with my spirit guides who given me past lives which again you can read in that book I mentioned earlier I'm not going to bore you here with it but uh, it was not an easy acceptance for me to be taken back into a life I'd lived and then having to be reprogrammed as Margaret afterwards. And that was more interesting than going back to the past life because I was watching me from above in angles and positions as an infant, young child and so on growing up. And it wasn't until I got into the teenage years I started to think, I know this child. And the thing that was going on in my head at that time was a school. 
and I was thinking she went to school and she could you know be in school and she could uh, do this brightly school one day she could have a school and I'm watching this child like this looking as though I'm looking at someone else and then all of a sudden I felt I knew this child and vroom, and I was back in my body and I knew it was me and from there I knew that my spirit guides were watching me in the same way that I, I'd just been watching I'd had been sharing their point of view of me growing up and how close they were to me and I want you to know that they do that with every single person born until the day you die and when you die they're there waiting for you and if you have a near death they're there and they're going to help you if you're coming back to come back so anyone who thinks that you're just going to cut your wrist and goodbye mm -mm. if you're meant to be here and you're going to go through that and recover and go on to help someone else you will so having said all that i i'm uh, gone over the parkinson's i've got over all these things i've been involved in big events like world symposium on humanity in england with ram das and, and uh, uh, president elizabeth carter came over and uh, John Denver, you know, I was very lucky. I've met so many famous people come and gone from England during those years, uh, including the royal family. And, and so, um, you know, I was born to this. I have an ancestry of the upper class, but my coding didn't want that. So I was seeing black people in my head before I ever even laid physical eyes on one. And I knew that we were all going to be equal, one human race. And I was here to hopefully see that and i will say over the years brief scenario here um watching um people changing uh, parliament in england going through europe common market uh, all the um what do you call them um laws and reformations changing in different countries and all the time thinking oh we're getting closer to allowing the races to intermarry and at the same time, the unions were springing up, and, and this was all going on in England and Europe. Uh, and I'm, I'm looking for unity in the races. And of course, I've grown up with snobbery, and I never was. So every time I heard, well, you know, they're not in our class, or they're not educated, or not something, I was like, it doesn't matter. You know, and my father couldn't understand it and until I was so famous at 35 that he became my student. And I'm happy to say all that snobbery went out the window and he lived to be a hundred and he was friends with everyone. But you see, he was born in India with slaves, servants, or whatever you want to call it in those days, because that was the birthright of those days. And here we are when I went to India and I was down in with all the poor children and, and making sure the mama who was in charge of all these kids got the money and I'd have to hold it way above my head just to give her the money because those kids would have snatched it out of my hand and been off. But that was what it was about, was for me to be in India to see the real India, not the India that my parents and grandparents talked about, but the real people and the things that went on. I did it in Egypt, I did it in South America, you know. So. I want you to understand that uh, I've, I've been shown the world in my head and all the way through I kept saying I'm going to have a school, I'm going to have school. So when I got to Murray's Education Centre and I got ordained and I got over here, the only thing in my head was I have to go to school. And I can tell you that I was constantly trying to make enough more to, money, you know, to live, feed my kids, um, help my husband, my husband backing me, until he got sick. Uh, and so after that, it became a bit difficult. And the years rolled by, and uh, the school just never seemed to manifest. And then about five years ago, I met someone who had a top floor in a building here in Havasu, where I live, and uh, it was all derelict and uh, I had some money from Japan because I was teaching over there and uh, I thought ah a center I'm going to have my school right and I'm going to bring other teachers here who are going to teach here and so I spent a lot of money and my husband who helped with me too he probably put two or three thousand just in the decor uh, you know rebuilding the top floor area that it was and then decor is as in plants and and wood things and whatever and flooring and this and that 
So I might probably put about 5,000 into this property willingly because I think this school. And then we get teachers coming and we're all ready, we're all ready to teach and nobody comes, nobody. And then eventually we get a few drug addicts, a few alcoholics who come, but they're not committed and they're still trying to do their drugs, whatever it is. So we didn't get anywhere with that. And all the people who are trying to teach who live locally, they weren't making enough money because nobody was coming, so they were going off to do something else. And many of them stopped doing their healing things. And, you know, it was just all falling apart. And I'm sitting there in this place thinking, why why did you give me this? Why did I put all this money in here? You said I was going to have a school. I finally got a school and there's no students. What's happening? And all I heard was, be patient. So I was patient. For four years and the owner was patient in that she let me be there without paying any rent mind you she wouldn't have been renting it out had i not done what i did and then uh one day she says to me i've got someone who wants to rent it and i'm like really i don't, didn't believe her and i knew she was lying but i accepted that because i could see sometimes things are lies and they're there for a reason to move you on and do something else and so i finally said I would let it go and uh, during that time my husband had passed on and so um, I thought this is an ending so um, I started sending off all the things that I'd put in this center and lo and behold COVID arrived and at that point I'm thinking oh dear that's probably why I had to get out but here I am today and I know exactly why they gave me that center because I asked them, I said, why did you give me that floor and you know, let me build a school and everything else? And they said, because you asked for it. So I said, well, yes, but it was supposed to work. And they said, that's your opinion, but that's not what the oneness wants. And I was like, well, what do they want? And they said to me, you will know soon. They didn't tell me. <laughs> and so I go back to all the other things I've been doing over the years. You know, I've been making radio shows, half hour radio shows on Web Talk Radio, which you can find now on um, up on the iCloud on, um, what is it, SoundCloud or something, uh, Ask Dr. Margaret. And you'll find in there um, my show's Journey into an Unknown World. And there's over 120 of them for half an hour. And now that I'm on the SoundCloud, um, I'm also doing one-hour talks and two-hour talks. Um, so there's a lot there for you to go for free and uh, listen to my shows and learn a great deal because I was always trying to teach. So online radio show was another way I thought I was doing a school. Anyway, so um, I did that. And then uh, way back in the 90s, I was doing the videos on YouTube. So you can find me there, dot ask, uh, what is it, um, user forward slash Dr. Margaret. Uh, you'll also find Journey into an Unknown World. Some of them are in Japanese, some in, you know, with translation. Um, some of them are pitching events or books or something of the time because we used to only do five minutes in the beginning. But as time went by, I made them longer and I did more of the topics I was doing on my radio show. So there's a lot there if you want to watch me on YouTube to um, see what I was teaching back in those days. So I'm still in my mind doing the school, right? Somehow I'm reaching out and I'm teaching people. And um, things went on quite well. I did a lot of audio and live TV, uh, say, sorry, jumping here, uh, live uh, YouTubes. But I also, while I was living in LA, uh, my husband and I, we did Psychic Chit Chat, a re real TV show, a half-hour TV show that we did with public access, and it aired all over uh, California, and I brought it to Arizona, where I aired it too. Unfortunately, I didn't get any responses because it had all, all my California um, phone numbers and such like. But now I've come into a new awareness with COVID arriving that uh, the... Uh, online school has evolved in my mind, by the way, as I've gone through all these different things I've been doing, teaching and traveling all over the world, that my school would become a college. And from a college, it would become a university. And so, of course, by the time I got to thinking that big, I'm thinking, 
how am I going to afford to get a university? It's a big building. It's a big complex of buildings and it costs money to buy it. I need to find a millionaire or a trillionaire or something. And I'm saying to Spirit, where, where are the people with money? How can I help build this? And hey, I'm not very good. I can't teach all these topics and subjects that go through my mind all at once. You know, it's got to be some way to do this. And they just laughed at me, of course, didn't say anything. Uh, and I was, you know, very depressed during much of this time because I'm trying so hard to be a good student in their eyes and do all the things that they're telling me will come to pass. And uh, with all the failures that happened throughout my life, I can really see looking back just how much of a pioneer I was in struggling and striving to realize a dream in the way that I was thinking of it, which of course now I can see was really wrong. <laughs> uh, and I, I say to you too, you know, no matter what your view is and your inspirations, you know, look back and look at how so many times you've had to adapt or even change completely and move in a different direction. And I can tell you I did plenty of that. So enter COVID, as I said earlier. And now I've got plenty to say about that because I've got my crystal acupuncture and all my other therapies and my spirit's talking through me about it and the vibrations of things. And I've written books like, um, uh, what was it called? Quantum Entanglement, a paranormal point of view about sound and how it's going to be the next vibration in the future that's going to give us hot houses, cold houses, whichever we need, fuel and so on. Uh, and uh, so, you know, when they start talking about COVID, I'm, I'm sharing my, uh, you know, blogs on um, LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter. And I've been doing that for many years, by the way. And I've got a wonderful uh, man that's helping me um, putting all my blogs into books on, uh, um, what is it, uh, Kindle. Uh, so if you're interested, search me, Margaret Rogers Van Coops. And um, you'll find, uh, you know, them there where you can download for a dollar or something. Uh, so coming back to how did I become a Van Coops, going back to when I came over and did the Mind, Body, Spirit event. From there, I was invited to go down to Long Beach to um, do a health convention with Valerie Warwood, who was with me with her aromatherapy. Now you have to realize that she is a pioneer in aromatherapy and the greatest one that I know. And although many people today are doing doTERRA and it's already mixed and it's pure and this and that, she is the pioneer. She is the one that learned it while she was in France and brought it to England and from England brought it over to America. So when she was with me at the Mind, Body and Spirit event, she had all the essential oils with her and she was dowsing on a little um, circle thing that I'd invented for her to do so she could do this and mixing up formulas for individuals at this expo. And that was the introduction of aromatherapy to America. And I have to say here that she and I both were obviously taught people, shared people, and then they went off and wrote their own books and claimed it as they were the inventors. We got ripped off a lot of times, but we weren't thinking of that. We were trying to teach people what we knew, and we never ever thought that people would make money out of it. And unfortunately they did. They took our teachings and they used it. And I'm saying to you that as a result of that, I've watched new generations come along who guard their work very seriously and are protecting it with serial marks and t trademarks and all sorts of things. But at the same time, they're putting thousands of dollars on the value of it and charging people who have no money an arm and a leg on their credit cards. And um, meanwhile, I and Valerie Woolworth and other people like me are saying, well, for 20 bucks, you know, we'll teach you something. So I want you to understand that eventually when I tell you why I'm here, that we are not going to be charging an arm and a leg for anything. We're here to bring teachers together to teach and train you at very low economical prices for everyone. Okay, but I'm going back to this event and you'll see why in a minute. So I'm back in uh, 
uh, LA uh, and I'm down at this Long Beach convention and a lady is having a reading with me and she produces a photo and she says is this really my aura and I look at it and it was I mean she was purple all over and her picture was purple all over I said where did you get this I've never seen anyone capture the aura on film well that led to me meeting my husband Stephen Van Koops and uh, of course getting married to him and also Guy Coggins who was the inventor of that little hokey camera in those days of being able to refract light back into the um, camera so that you could capture the energy of an aura around a person. And today, <coughs> he never left school. He was a sixth grade and uh, he's just a genius. And today he has uh, a lot of uh, mechanics, computer work around that work. I'm not so happy about that because I know it's fixed. But who cares? Because at least it taught the world that the aura existed. And that was the main lesson that was so important. And my husband went on to work with me and with Spirit to prove that the Spirit Guides are there. They would put their faces in the aura, they would put things like someone's toilet in a picture or uh, because that was where they meditated and only they knew that because it's private. But we could read it and tell them these things to, um, you know, strange, unusual things like one time we were just taking a picture of the black backdrop to make sure that uh, the camera is working and in the middle of the photo was a picture of one of the boxes of the film and uh, we didn't know what it meant until my husband opened my, the new box and we found out it was all out of date and it didn't work and they were trying to warn him that he had uh, been sold bad film so after that he was rushing around trying to find good film and in those days it was Polaroid so you can see how important that was when you're doing an event and your people are lining up for their auras. But the research that we went through and the way it helped me in developing my crystal acupuncture and my other therapies was absolutely amazing. So I want you to understand here that my journey has brought a lot of amazing people into my life in different ways where I've been able to really learn by them being in my life. And I want you to think back at all the people being in your life because somehow they've taught you, even if it's been negative, to think about what you feel and what you think and what you do. And so if you're going to want to develop your psychic ability, that's one of the biggest and easiest ways you can learn to use it is to understand the lessons you've been having because there's your library of information. But that's a little teaching thing there. But coming back to that, um, there was instant love. We couldn't help ourselves. It was karmic. We were destined to meet. I carried him off to England. And uh, then he carried me back here. And eventually I became a citizen. And I kept my Rogers because I got four boys with Rogers and added Van Coops. And today I'm the only Rogers Van Coops in the whole world. So you can find me when you search for me online. So it worked out quite well for me, didn't it? So anyway, coming back to that event, I met some people who were from a university and they were sort of far reaching of their day and they were saying that they were looking for people who would like to teach at a university. Well, of course I said, I'm going back to England. So that went out the window. But when I came back uh, and having also told um, a man who started the Mind Body Spirit events in uh, this country, that um, he went on to actually do that. And uh, I actually was uh, introduced to my Japanese friend who I wasn't interested in at that time in going to Japan. Uh, and he was looking for teachers to go over there. Uh, and I just sort of arrived in, um, this was about 86, 87. So I was just putting my roots down in this country, uh, establishing my re reputation. And uh, the gentleman, you know, was saying in English that he'd like me to come to Japan. And I was like, that's very nice one day. Well, when I did finally get there um, 10 years later or maybe eight um, and see him, I was just amazed. And here I want you to understand that sometimes we see people way ahead and we don't know how they fit into our little puzzle. It's like having a jigsaw puzzle and you've got all these pieces and they don't seem to come together. And so when I got to Japan, 
uh, they just wanted me to teach reflexology, a few things like that. And by the time I'd been there for 20 years, I had evolved so much to create um, courses, um, classes, courses, workshops, lectures, one-offs. You know, there were so many things. I had a golden opportunity to see the teacher in me. And I'm thinking, well, okay, well, this must be my school over here. And, um, you know, I'm part, having all these students who are really sticking with me over those years, taking exams and getting giving them certificates and diplomas under Sumaris Education Center and Universal Christchurch, which was the foundation upon which I was now building uh, in this country. And I'm still thinking, well, okay, so my school is not a physical one in this country. And as I said earlier, I actually got one and found out that wasn't working. So here I am coming up to date now and saying, well, I'm throwing my arms up in despair and I'm saying I've lost the center, COVID's arrived, and what do I do? And out of the blue, I get invited to do another event we have been doing several of them, 5D events, and every one, hardly anyone turns up. But it gives me an opportunity to speak and we record it and put it up on YouTube or somewhere. And uh, that was David Farid who in invited me again to be a keynote speaker. And just before that happened, I was invited on a radio show, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, uh, and uh, their lovely couple would do their own radio show. And uh, there was this young lady sitting there at the back saying nothing. And I thought, why doesn't she say anything? Because usually it's a share or on, on uh, live radio these days or video. And when it finished, they disappeared. And then she spoke. And it turned out to be Katie Kamara. And Katie was their producer. And uh, we got chatting. And in the short version here, she came to meet me in Las Vegas. And now she's my business partner. And she's a whiz kid. She's 35. Uh, and she's like a daughter I never had and uh, we get on very well and she is taking all my books and revamping them she's taking all my shows and putting them up on um, SoundCloud uh, and uh, redoing YouTube she's a whiz kid as I said she's doing all these things plus she's got her own thing she does in her own show uh, her school is um, I have to always think Soma Fusion Media and uh, I've been able to give her her ordination because she's well trained and uh, all her tests and things I did with her showed me she was more than adequate to qualify. So um, I want to introduce you to her and say go look for her. She's got books published and her name again, Katie, K-A-T-I-E, Kamara, K-A-M-A-R-A. -A. And, um, you know, do follow her because she's a fantastic young woman and very typical of young mothers of today who are rearing very psychic, very attuned, very aware children. And so um, what we've come to do now is to realize that we need several uh, websites which she's building for me and I'm writing material for them. So I'm here to share it with you because um, I'm looking for teachers like me, but not in my topic, okay? So let me co come back to the sites first of all. The first one is um, easypeasysolutions.org. That's as you spell it, E-A-S-Y-P-E-A-S-Y-S-O-L-U-T-I-O-N-S.org. If you're interested in learning anything, go there. We're going to have free talks. We're going to have free interactions on Zoom, you know, and, and you're welcome to ask questions and have time with us. And so what we'd like you to do is to go to the homepage there and put in your name, email and so on and your phone number and any questions, anything you want to ask us, because we can discuss these online uh, or with you privately if that's necessary. Uh, and if you're interested in being a teacher, put that there too. Now, if you're more serious and you've done a lot of dabbling and you've got quite a few sort of certificates that different people have given away that mean something to you, but it doesn't really qualify you and you'd like to get more education, then we'd invite you to go to www.sumaris, S-U-M-A-R-I-S, that's S for sugar, either end of the word, education center, C-E-N-T-E-R dot com. American spelling. 
S-U-M-A-R-I-S-E-D-U-C-A-T-I-O-N-C-E-N-T-E-R.com. Now, what I want you to do there is go in and put in all the same information and tell me the type of class you're looking for because supply and demand is in question here. If I get sort of 30 people saying I want to study psychic development, that's going to be the first class. Whereas if I get a whole bunch of people saying they want to learn how to do crystal acupuncture, that would be the first class. So we're looking at priorities in terms of what you, the people, want. So that's important. You go there and let me know. Plus, you know, we can do a whole bunch of classes, talks and things, seminars, workshops, and most of them will be either for free or a very nominal price at $25 to $29 or something per class. And we're never going to turn around and say, now you've done this, you can buy my package for X number of thousand dollars. No, 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 no. You will pay what you want as you go at the same kind of price. We do not want to uh, do anything that is bad for you. Obviously, if you become really an urgent student and you really want to study with us, yes, the classes will mount up over a period of time. And yes, we will give you an opportunity to pay in advance and we will give uh, discounts for things like that. But this is all to be worked out, but it will never, ever be more than going to college. Uh, we assure you that. Okay. Now, if you are more spiritually kind uh, a person where you want to help others and be a coach and have religious philosophy or psychic development uh, all those kinds of things and you will go to universalchristchurch.com where we will train you as a healer and a medium and we require that you have education bible prayers you know all these kinds of things and given time you can become a reverent practitioner we realize that people don't want to necessarily do church services anymore that's old hat but for those who really, really want to be a, a minister that does a church service, marries people, buries people, I do have a second year course where you would be one-on-one -on -one with me uh, or a small, small group where I'm training you over time. And we will have, when it comes to physicalities and the COVID is gone, we will have uh, collective classes in Las Vegas. Uh, because that's a hub where uh, people can come, fly in, do the workshops and then have the evening to have some fun, have a vacation uh, and the rooms are so cheap. So, uh, you know, that's something to look forward into the future. Now, if you want to have a special session just with me privately, like a reading or counselling or dealing with abuse or something like that, uh, as a minister, I can help you for free, but obviously I don't want to be abused. Uh, so if you're able to donate something to Universal Christchurch to help us pay for expenses, we would appreciate that. The money that won't go into my pocket will go into the church foundation. Now, if on the other hand you are able to pay me a fee, I do have a fee for private sessions, uh, then I appreciate that and those fees will go in my pocket. So I'm very straight with you and I want you to understand that the same is with Katie. So uh, we are still working on building all these uh, websites. So my website for that is uh, Dr. Margaret Speaks uh, and uh, .com and uh, as I said earlier, um, I have a wonderful PR guy um, and he's available for anyone out there who needs a PR guy to put up your work in small books and um, get you uh, interviewed on magazines and radio shows and things like that, I can introduce you to him. He does work for a fee, but it's not an expensive fee and he is able to adapt according to your income. So he's there as well behind me. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is you. Are you a student? But are you a teacher too? Have you been specializing in something for years and been struggling to find students who really want to study with you? Because a lot of people, especially in America, I've learned, will start and drop out, start and drop out. And it's very frustrating for a teacher. 
but wouldn't you like to have people who are all over the world who are really seriously wanting to study and who you can teach at a very, very reasonable price and know that they're taking your work into the future for the future generations to come. So here's where my school has turned not into a college, but to a university online. And we need teachers, okay? All right, I could teach a dozen classes myself, but hey, that's not what it's about. All of us have something we love to do and specialize in teaching. Some of us, for example, do a lot of work with aliens and people who've had alien encounters and those people are frightened out of their wits and they don't know whether they're evil or not. And I'll tell you quite up front that most of the aliens are not evil or harmful. In fact, they teach us to be stronger. But yes, there are some that come and go, but they have ulterior motives, like they want to, you know, to take something from us and uh, manipulate us in some way. But we have the ability to ward them off. We're more evolved than they are. So stop worrying. There are people who teach you that. I know of people who have done Reiki and, and aromatherapy and Shiatsu and all these different therapies, and they specialize in it. I do, but I like to mix them up. So I teach students how to mix these different therapies. Okay, but I don't have to see you all the way through to getting your diploma at the end of that semester. I want someone else who can give that to you. Okay, and anyone who is trained uh, through their schooling, through their university, or through just a private person can be recognized through Universal Christchurch, which is also attached to. California University for Foreign Students or extra education following, you know, if you're American, you've been to school and you're getting extra curriculum through college or whatever, you can also add the courses you do with us online. And, uh, you know, my husband, for example, was missing two points from graduation for Berkeley University. And with the qualifications that I gave him, he was able to get that extra point or two points, I think it was, to become, to get his PhD. And uh, for me, so you know, uh, when I came to this country, they wanted me to teach the Muslim doctors who were going back to countries where there was no equipment, so they'd have to have alternative therapies. And I was hot to trot with Arizona University to teach these students. And uh, when the uh, war and the Muslim terrible killings and things started, and of course the door slammed shut. But not before California University had given me my two PhDs. One for my psychology, psychiatry, stuff I'd done in England, uh, and uh, my ministry, and all these hypnosis courses I'd done, and all sorts of things. And then on the other side, for all my research and therapies that I'd created over the years, uh, and so uh, I walked away with two PhDs and they offered my, me my professorship. I'm like, what? I haven't earned that. Well, I found out years later that the requirement in this country is five years of teaching. <laughs> I'd had 35 by then. And so uh, I, I didn't know that. But uh, years later, I went back and I asked if I could have it so that I could teach you to get your PhD. Okay. So, um, yes, I'm a professor now. And, uh, but I still like to be called Dr. Margaret. But I have big dreams because I have big spirit guides, guardian angels, ascended masters, you name it, I can talk to them. And that's not bragging, that's because my journey has taken me into that vibration. I work with the Holy Host, the Brotherhood of Light, the seven archangels. I work with aliens from other planets. It goes on, okay? And whatever you need, I know about you. I can read everyone, okay? So if you need a reading or you need help or you need guidance or you're confused, you don't know where to start with learning to be a metaphysician, then I can help you sort that out. But I want you to believe in yourself, more importantly. I want you to believe that you have the ability to be a student and learn or to go out and teach other people because you've studied so hard and you're ready. So what I'd like you to do, if you want to be a teacher with us, is to go to easypeasysolution.org, fill out that page I was talking about earlier, uh, put in the box there who you are 
uh, in terms of what you'd like to teach and leave me your phone number and emails and stuff and we'll get in touch with you and we'll have a nice long chat on Zoom or somewhere depending on which country you're in and uh, find out exactly what you do. Now obviously you have to understand that we will be asking you to you know really to teach us what you know by showing us and telling us what you know. So we will have some Q&As um, because we can't just let any old person teach. We want high level education because that's what a university gives, high level education. Okay, so if you're a level one person and you've got the beginnings of the teacher and you want to teach, we're not turning you away. We're just saying, let us know that you're just on the first rungs of the ladder and we'll open a door for you to do talks so that you get used to that. At the same time, you might want to learn with us uh, more about the topics that you've been doing. So there aren't no closed doors. There is one proviso I do have on um, the websites that says, if you have been an abuser, by that I mean hurting someone, harming someone, uh, being in trouble with the law, you need to come clean about it. Because, you know, if you think about um, the Catholic faith, and all the priests who are abusing the children. We can't have those kinds of people in our structure. So if you've been someone who's got a dark side and it is on record, we will be checking. So don't apply. I'm sorry, but I can't do that. I have to protect the people, the students, everyone, and the name of the university that will build and build. Now, I get bigger in my mind because I'm speaking English, but there are going to be a lot of people listening, Hispanic, French, Italian, German, whatever it is, who speak English. But hey, you have your natural language. And so remembering this is going to be a universal university online, we need teachers who can translate um, different languages for some of the speakers. We also need people who can teach in their own country so that if you're really, really qualified, we can back you into Universal Christchurch, Samaris Education Center um, as um, a satellite school. And uh, from there, uh, you can teach your classes and courses and through us, qualify students. Now, I have a couple of people doing that. I have Remy Kanai, who's a reverend, uh, who's trained by me, who's in Japan, who has also opened up and teaching people in, uh, I think it was Sweden, Norway, Finland, uh, Denmark, down into uh, Switzerland. So she's been doing the top of Europe and that kind of thing. And uh, she speaks English as well as Japanese. So she's fortunate, you see, she has both languages. And if you're someone that has that talent in your language, then you could be um, you know, qualifying and, and teaching our classes in your language, or you could be interpreting and still learning. So we'll have special rates for people who are interpreters, who will be helping people in your own country and learning at the same time while you're interpreting. So there's a lot of opportunities here. Last but not least, technical people. Katie and I, Katie is very technical compared with me. I'm an idiot. Okay, um, and if we're going to have such a, a vast number of people coming into this uh, university online, we need a vast number of technical people who have felt in their whole life that they've been learning and studying all this stuff and keeping up with it because there's some purpose in what you're doing. And we realize too that if you're in the back office doing all this work, you need to be paid too. So part of what we will do with the things that we do as time goes by is build a foundation. And we will be looking for multimillionaires, billionaires, or whatever you want to call them, uh, who would like to donate and sponsor us and support us so that we can help all the younger mothers and fathers be good teachers to their children so that their children will grow up and birth even better students so that we have a world of unity after all. We're all one race, the human race. The fact that we have different skins, different shaped eyes and so on is because of genetic engineering done ancient alien times away, a long time ago. And though we can't remember it, their genes are in our DNA. And their 
abilities to connect with us through the oneness are still with us. So that's why a lot of people are awakening to the idea that they have guides who are aliens. So don't poo-poo them because they're not talking rubbish. It's a time that the oneness is solidifying unity of all that's gone before. Now we only remember the last 3,500 years or so because that's the Piscean age and before that was the Taurus age and before that the Aryan age. So we're looking at, at you know, around um, 1,400,000 years because we were further away from the sun than we are now and we're in the Aquarian age. It's going to be about 3,000 uh, 250, 70 years, so spirit guides tell me. I, I'm sure I won't be here unless I reincarnate many times, uh, which is possible, um, uh, because we all come and go. So another topic that you might want to study along with hypnosis and things like that. So I think I've said an awful lot uh, in, a, in a whole hour, and I've probably overwhelmed you with my dream. But hey, I've noticed this little dream from when I was five because they told me I'd have it until here I am, 78 years old and pushing 79. And I am so excited, overwhelmed with the fact that we have Zoom. And I'm sure there's some great inventors out there inventing something better than Zoom. And hey, you might be the very person we're waiting that can build this wonderful university online for anyone, anywhere in the world to come on and learn. Now think about this. Right now, all the school teachers are teaching the kids at home on the computer. This is the dawn of a new age where we're learning. We can learn through school. Okay. Now the one thing we're not having is socializing in terms of touch because we're human and we need to touch. But if you learn psychic ability, if I put my hands up like this, and you put your hands near the screen where my hands are, and I'm gonna be here for a minute, you are gonna get tingles in your fingertips. So I'm gonna be here just for a minute, and I am transmitting something you can't see, energy. And that energy is a vibration, it's a resonation, it's a sound. Some of you may feel it right away. Others of you may say, I don't feel anything. And the problem is not that you can't feel it right away, but that your mind is saying, what am I supposed to feel? How am I supposed to feel? What should I do? Or this won't work. I'm not sensitive. Forget all that rubbish talky, nice word there, and just feel. Right? Now, you could even put this on pause and because you were tuning to my fingertips you would still feel it why because we're all connected in the oneness and you know what i'd love to hear from you if you did feel it so go again to easypeasysolutions.org and if you write yes i did feel it then okay we're going to send a reply to you to let you know we're really pleased and to invite you to our first talk <laughs> which is free okay so um what am i going to be doing with katie we're going to be talking about um our basic relationships okay because we're all locked down at home you've got mum and dad you've got granny and grandpa you've got your husband or your wife you've got kids and so on depending on your sex and what you're talking about gay or straight i mean there's just so much so I'm going to be talking with Katie about the psychological side of being with someone and how you can use your psyche to overcome your judgment and be sensory to a different you in a relationship that you haven't yet seen before. And uh, so I think you're going to enjoy that. There's going to be uh, six or seven classes. We haven't really defined it exactly, depending on how many people turn up. And then when you've done that, we're, we're going to do some on fear, pain, anger, guilt and loss. And, and these are all relative to stuff you're going through right now. And uh, we're hoping that at least we'll get 20, 30 people. But who knows? We could get 100. I don't know. But uh, whatever we're going to do, I'm going to have you be able to talk to me or Katie. So we'll have open mic when we pick a name on, on the list or whoever's there uh, and let you talk. 
and, and ask a question, you know. So we want that interaction. And so yet again I'm saying, ask and you shall receive. Knock and it will be opened unto you. And of course the first thing we have to do is seek it. <laughs> go look for it, okay. So I hope you found me and I hope you'll go look at the websites and I hope you'll sign up that you're knocking on my door <laughs> and uh, asking and then I'll give you an answer I'll help you okay so yet again remember Katie Kamara search her on on Google you can search me Margaret Rogers Van Coops we come up you'll find us everywhere and if you haven't written all these down I'm going to write them underneath the video when I put it up uh, so look under the text and uh, we'll go from there so thank you for listening i appreciate you and by the way one last thing i didn't say i have 17 books as well so you might want to go to amazon but give me a couple of more weeks because um katie took them down she's redoing the back ends because i've got 17 books and most of them were published so long ago they only had three or four books and then five or six books and so on so we're updating them so be patient but you can find the ebooks they're still there so take care until we meet again. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening.